thought we'd get uh, Frau Link up here to talk during halftime about German exchange programs now. German exchange program. I may at halftime go get, uh, nah, I won't need it. What's that? I said I was, I said I was gonna think, I was thinking about going at halftime, because I got, I got a sheet of their, all their quotes and stuff, okay. but I left it in my office. But you, you got it, you settled in. I'll just, yeah, I'll we're just good. Mention one or two. Hello and welcome everyone to a sold out, jam packed Mascuda High School for this sectional championship game between two storied rivalry programs in the East St. Louis Flyers and the Cahokia Comanches. Both teams coming into this game on strong play by several players. Alongside my partner John Hinkle, I'm Scott Battis. We welcome you inside of Mascuda High School in Mascuda, Illinois, the host for this sectional championship game. And John, if you're a high school basketball fan, especially in the St. Louis area, this is the place to be tonight. It doesn't get much better than this. You're right, Scott. As a matter of fact, talking to both coaches as they had their preliminary sectional contest earlier in the week, both of them said that this is what they play for, this is what they coach for, and for the fans, this is what they wait for. It's an exciting time. As you can see, the, the gym pretty much split right down the middle. We're over 1,800 people here. Certainly uh, not something that this building sees every day. But when we talk about these two teams, especially uh, uh, East St. Louis, you certainly don't talk about them without their all-state candidate, uh, superstar Deshaun Munson. He does it all, doesn't he? Boy, he certainly does, and he certainly looks the role, too. Probably if you uh, had to pick a, uh, an outstanding player out of a group, uh, somebody just looks the role, you'd pick Deshaun. I agree. And the thing about Deshaun is, certainly as we said, he's an All-State candidate, certainly a Division I prospect. Uh, you know, that remains to be seen where he'll be next year. But with him, he doesn't do it by himself. Probably even more impressively down low, Johnny McCrary, the big 6'5", 240-pound senior, had 13 points on Wednesday night. He's the guy down low that really lets Munson do his thing. If Munson gets in trouble at all, he likes to find McCrary down low. McCrary knows how to finish. Scott, you're exactly right. And as a football coach, I'm sure that you're, you'd like to lick your chops over <laughs> seeing a specimen like that lining up on your side in the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Johnny McCrary uh, is really some, something to see. Uh, he's the second leading scorer on the Flyers squad. And... Uh, I tell you what, they have some, uh, they've got a move, uh, a combination between uh, between Munson and McRae that uh, maybe they should file for a patent on because it works and it's guaranteed and it's fun to watch. It's incredible. And, and you know, back to Munson before we get to Cahokia, Munson is really a special player, and let me tell you why. He's averaging almost a triple-double. And certainly that's a term that's thrown around a lot in the NBA with LeBron James and those guys that get those on a regular basis. But the most impressive thing about uh, Deshaun Munson, he has 12 triple doubles. He had his 12th triple double on, on Wednesday night. In eight minute quarters in high school basketball, a triple double is no gimme. This guy is an unbelievable basketball player. He does it all over the place. He's, he, he jumps out of the gym. He certainly likes to pass the basketball. It's a rare breed in today's high school game to find a kid like him. Boy, that's for sure. And statistically, he is, uh, he's the bulk of their offense. Uh, first of all, on defense, his speed just matches his up well with every, with anybody else. And at 6'4", he can play any of the spots on a, on a lineup. But uh, they uh, they like to see him shoot, and he's gone ahead and aired it up uh, 
346 times uh, this year. Uh, he's an outstanding shooter from the field, a great penetrator. Probably the only thing, and uh, unarguably, is that he needs to improve a little bit at the charity strike because he is a penetrator and he gets hacked a lot going to the hoop. Absolutely. East St. Louis comes into tonight's game with a 22-7 and record. They're ranked number five in the state in 3A. They deserve every bit of that. If not, I believe they could be a little underrated. That 22-7 and record certainly sticks out as, as anything but flawless. But don't forget, they play in the Southwestern Conference, one of the most competitive conferences in the state. Their loss is coming to the likes of Bebo East, uh, Edwardsville, teams that are playing, you know, Edwardsville playing deep tonight into the 4A round. So, you know, a 22-7 a and seven record may not look uh, flawless, but let me tell you something. They don't play a 3A schedule. When they get into the 3A round, they're dangerous. On the other hand, they're playing a team tonight that's been 3A for a while in Cahokia. They come into tonight's game 30 and 3. They play in a South Sevens conference. It's not bad either. Those guys know how to play basketball down there. They got guys that can score it too. No more, no more so than Keenan Meyer, the 6'2 senior. This kid can really score. He can shoot it as well as any kid you'll see at his age. And boy, is he special. Boy, he certainly is. Uh, he's, a, he's, and I don't want to say a smaller image of uh, Deshaun Munson because. Uh, uh, Keenan Miner uh, makes his own style on the court. He is a leading scorer on the team. As a matter of fact, he's the leading scorer on the floor tonight. Uh, the 6'2 senior pops 21.6 points per game. But, uh, you know, Scott, as you said earlier, uh, the team uh, com competitions and so on uh, with East, Side, uh, East St. Louis playing against uh, in the Southwest Conference, uh, it, it's tough. It's tough. Those are big schools, and uh, the losses do indeed matter. Uh, Cahokia, as you mentioned again, with a 30 and three, and, and the amazing statistic at that is we could easily be saying 33 and nothing because they lost uh, almost three months ago. They lost the game by four points. They lost to Evansville, a powerhouse from Indiana, by two, and then Edwardsville, always a strong program. They lost by one on a buzzer beater. So their three losses came by a total of just seven points. Unbelievable. And, and, and the thing about them, really unheard of coming into the game tonight on a winning 23 out of 24 games. Their only loss coming to Edwardsville in that streak. As a matter of fact, East St. Louis comes into the game, winners of 18 out of their last 19. Their only loss in that streak to Edwardsville. I saw both those games, and let me tell you something. Edwardsville t the Edwardsville team they played, probably one of the better 4A teams in the state. Uh, seen them play several times, certainly my brother on the staff. But ironically, these two teams Similar matchups for Edwardsville, a common opponent. You can't really tell a difference. Uh, the only thing I'll say with Edwards, uh, as far as Edwardsville is concerned with East St. Louis, the last time East St. Louis played Edwardsville, they were shorthanded. Minor, and, uh, sorry, take that back, Munson and McCrary did not play for off-the-court reasons, uh, and, and therefore a 10-11 point game there against Edwardsville at home. But the previous meeting, like you said before, a win for Edwardsville at the buzzer could have went either way. Bottom line tonight, you've got two of the premier teams in Southern Illinois, if not the state. And I would not be shocked at all if the winner of tonight's game is playing for the title next week in Peoria. I, I don't disagree with you one bit, Scott. As a matter of fact, both of these teams you can call butter because they both belong on a roll. They've both been on a roll. Uh, and, and what you said about the teams matching up right now, a game that really, really is important. And when we talked to the coaches earlier in the week, they both – tried to impart that this is just going to be another game but in their heart of hearts in the players minds we know that it's not because indeed the winner of this contest could be behind themselves in the final for the 3a state championship absolutely couldn't agree more and I you know I, I we talk a lot about the superstars I I, I think a guy that probably uh, not familiar to a lot unless you're a really good basketball fan in the area is the supporting cast for Keenan Meyer and Darius Austin, a 6'7 junior. He's a Division I prospect with four or five offers already. He's averaging 12 points a game. He's long, he's big, um, and he plays the role down in the post. Let's Meyer do his thing. Just another kid we get to watch tonight. It's, it's going to be fun tonight, John. The, like I said, the place is packed. Uh, couldn't be more excited to bring the action here. Boy, you can feel the excitement in the air. They're making some of the uh, announcements uh, to get uh, the contest uh, ready to go. They'll be announcing the starting lineups in just a second, and we will join you as play begins.
cash test. momentarily okay folks we will pass this down to our public address announcer Kellen Kentwick and he will bring you tonight's starting lineup A little bit about the coaches for this game tonight. Cahokia, head coach Darren Nash. He's no rookie to games like this. Last year, same setup. East St. Louis, Cahokia. It was a one-point ball game last year. A 61-60 game that went to East St. Louis at the Altoff Regional. Tonight, a rematch, a lot more on the stake. And East St. Louis has a new head coach. And Tony Young in his first season as he comes to East St. Louis from being a, a grad assistant at SLU, and he is excited saying these, these games like this are what it's all about. We couldn't agree more. 
We're ready for the tip. And here we go live from Mascuda High School. Tip controlled by Munson. Already down low to McCrary and he misses a layup and it's out of bounds. The ball's gonna stay here with East St. Louis. Inside the McCrary, he's 0 for 2 for down there. Okay. That's what they want to do, John. They just can't capitalize on the first two opportunities. He's, he's taking up residence in that paint, and the coach talked about getting those paint points. He certainly can. He missed that one, though, but he pulls up a rebound coming down. A little small ball given back to the big man. McCrary up and in for his first two of the game. We talked about him, John. He can score the basketball when he gets it inside. Already minor with a long three out by the Indian sign. About a 23-foot shot for Keenan Miner, and John, you have to think, he probably just wants to get his feet wet. Probably, probably not the only one in the building that thought he'd attempt something like that from the jump here. You know, and he's not a bad long-range shooter, too. No, he likes it from out there. Gokio inbound from under the basket to Miner. He penetrates in low up, and he, oh, ball bounces on him and in for Miner, or two. If you, when you're talking about Keenan Miner, a lot of people relate his game to an old man game, they call it. He'll take you inside. He'll come back out and pop the jumper in your eye. He's really a skilled young man. Here he is. Okay, we got a tie ball. And that was the bread and butter right there. Munson trying to go ahead and penetrate the defense. Got a little bit. Got, got his feet tangled a little bit. The ball got on the ground. And we had, um, we had some Comanches jump all over it. I think that's to be expected for a game like this, John. The nerves got to be running crazy. That ball's going to pop around a little bit here before the kids get in a rhythm and find a flow here. Okay, right away, East Side slaps on some full court pressure. Reverse layups, no good, and the ball's ripped away. Two turnarounds, three turnarounds in a row. Munson in the lane. Out to McCrary, Trevon McCrary. That is no good from three and the other way. We got transition basketball all over the place. You're not kidding. Those refs are going to need oxygen pretty soon. This is Austin. He is fouled on the way up. He'll go to the line and shoot two. 6'7 junior really came across that lane and got sky high. Yes, he did. The foul's on East St. Louis. Michael Scott, his first. Team first. As we said at the line for two, Darius Austin. First one's no good. <laughs> Folks, we'll be calling the game tonight without the benefit of instant replay, so we'll do our best to give you what we see when we see it. Uh, we will not have replays there available uh, for several reasons, but we will keep you on top of the action the best we can. Munson controls it up top to McCrary. McCrary to Dan Williams, the All-State wide receiver, heading to Jackson State on a football scholarship. In the lane is where he misses a layup up and in, tried to reverse, and then he fouls Carlton Rivers of Cahokia. Right. Well, he came in. He came in like a one-man gangbuster right there. Yes, he Put did. about three moves into one drive, missed it on his own rebound, got fouled. Dan Williams is a kid for East St. Louis we haven't said a lot about. Really athletic kid, great wide receiver, good in the air. You'll see a lot of him tonight around the basket. Inside to Vincent Jackson. They kick it back out to Rivers who likes to shoot the three. Over 50% on the year for Rivers. Down inside to Jackson. It's Dan Williams the other way. Contact at midcourt. Looks like... Looks like Austin's going to pick up his first foul. Yeah, we got a foul out there, Scotty. And right now, I think the nerves are really demand, uh, kind of driving the game. We've had uh, not very efficient possessions and so on. We've had that's our fifth turnover between the two teams, uh, and a score of just three to two. Fouls on Darius Austin, his first team first. Munson to inbound right in front of the scores table. Out to Scott, who will control from the point. To Munson. Munson 
Look to shoot the three. Another turnover. Another turnover. Another turnover. That's seven turnovers. Well, Munson looked to shoot the three there. Got some pressure and tried to dish to McCrary, and he wasn't open. Here's Austin in the paint with a dish. There we go. Vincent Jackson with the put. Back for two. You know, a little bunny from two feet away, and that might help explain why he's an 88% uh, shooter from the field. Here's Scott for three. It's off the mark, rebounded by Vincent Jackson underneath. Austin controls the ball. No pressure from East St. Louis. They're going to set up an offense. Okay. Well, East St. Louis is certainly coming out hard, as Coach indicated they would. Here's Miner for three, and he's off the mark. 0 for 2 from Threeville for, for Keenan so far. He will find his touch at some point tonight. I can guarantee you that, John. Miner controlling things from the point. In the lane, we got a travel violation. I thought that was going to be the call, John. That's the right call. Yeah, I think so, too. I mean, you know, it was one of those, uh, what we used to call was traveling and so on. It was a ball control. I mean, he just carried the ball up and high in the air. Yeah. Super dribble. We've talked about Munson. Phenomenal basketball player. If there's one area that he may struggle some, it's being a little bit out of control at bad times. Another turnover by Cahokia. Williams steals it, and the ball is off Carl River's foot. Out of bounds to East St. Louis. Dan Williams, the inbound. That's right. Carlton's got uh, 30 steals already this season. He just poked that ball out of bounds to prevent what could have been an easy two for the layup. Yeah, he's an active player on defense as well. Munson controls it. Over to Scott. Down to McCrary. Scott. Munson looking for his buddy down low. McCrary. He's puts a body on somebody up and in. What a nice job. I tell you what. Using his body like we said in pregame. Okay. If the X-Men were out on the field right now, out on the court, McCrary would be the beast. <laughs> Another turnover. Looks like they're going to call a foul. We got, we got a foul. Lost Shoot. control of the ball, went across the east side, and then he went to get it, and we had a foul on it. Foul's on one. I think that's Michael Scott, and I believe that's his. Am I wrong here? I thought they called that on Scott, John. I think they got it wrong on the board. Well, Cahokia will be inbounding under their own basket. Definitely a foul on East St. Louis. I think the scores table has it wrong. It is going to be on one. John, this is there it is, his yeah. second foul. So a, a quick two for Michael Scott, uh, uh, one of their perimeter shooters, and they don't want to lose him this early. He's got to stay no, out of foul no, trouble. Not at all. Not at all. One thing, both of these teams don't play really a deep bench. They maybe go seven. But you don't lose much by bringing somebody off the pine. You'll see Coach Young for East St. Louis. He's an active coach. He's going to coach up and down the floor. And he'll use his bench. He doesn't want to this early, though. Nash more calm, laid back. Another turnover. Ball's on the ground. Right. Everybody's hands in there. There we go. It's a jump ball, and that's a good call. He was wiggling around both east and west of that center line. The referee came in, thumbs up. You'd have thought they had a... $100,000 lottery ticket at midcourt there. I've way that basketball, John. Yes, sir. Well, East St. Louis is still staying with a little smaller lineup, but the Comanches are not giving away anything in the speed department. Munson tries to take Gary Hickman off the dribble and turns it over. We're going to stay here. Say the ball was tipped. Hard to tell from here. Couldn't really tell. They're going to they're going to keep it here. The officials are conferring. They've, they've changed it back to Cahokia. I think that's the right call, John. I like to see the officials communicate when they're not sure. Nice job by them. Yeah, I do too. Uh, they're doing a great job and so on. I mean, there is the action is breakneck speed right now. This is a slow possession right now. The coach indicated that he wanted to see a half-court offense be able to be run. Miner out to Austin. Inside, oh. nice no-look pass to Vincent Jackson. Great job moving speed. the basketball. 6'6", six, six, senior jumps up. That's his second from just the other well, side of the basket. That's created by Austin, the big 6'7 Austin out here. The, the man is the ball at the top of the key, finding the open defender. Certainly he draws a lot of attention. McCrary to Dan Williams. Dan Williams off the dribble. Back to McCrary for three. No good. Rebound, Colton Rivers. And he will control the basketball up the court. At least they're dribbling to the half court. On the, on the most part, they've been throwing the ball. From Rivers the for three. No good. Off the mark. Rebound, East St. Louis and Antonio Stewart. Here it is. 
There it is, Scott. Another one. Of the oh, Dan Williams, and I think he walked. Yes. Yeah. Feet got tangled up. Yep, he sure did. Seven to four, Cahokia, 2.39 left in the first quarter. Live from a sold out Mascuda High School in Mascuda, Illinois, in this 3A sectional championship game between East St. Louis and Cahokia. Glad you could join us tonight on IHSA.TV. Great night for basketball, great action so far. And Rivers controls the ball for Cahokia. Penetrates out to Miner for a wide open three. He's no good. And that is not the Keenan Miner we've seen. No, it sure isn't, as a matter of fact. Well, as you remember, the previous game, too, he started off a little bit slow before he lit it up. He did. Munson up and off the mark, but fouled. He'll go to the line. The foul is on Cahokia. Vincent Jackson, his first. Team second at the line, shooting two. East St. Louis superstar, Deshaun Munson. Okay, Deshaun's got to make, make him pay right here because this is his Achilles heel, this charity strike. You know, for two teams that really know how to score the basketball, certainly a slow start offensively, 7-5, to 2.14 left in the first quarter. Okay, he dropped the first one, so maybe he's got, got the table set for the second one. He's out there for one purpose, and that's to score baskets. Or create scores, you bet. There it is, two for two. Good for him. Good start by him. He's got to be the leader for East St. Louis if they want to win the basketball game tonight. Right. That's Jackson down low with a big strong oh, That's a goal count. That's got to be goal that's good. And it is. That's good. And that's Vince Jackson. That's the third, third one for him. I'll tell you what, Coach. I'm impressed by the way Vincent Jackson's attacked this basketball game. You know what? You string a rope from his, his shots to the bucket, and then you, you could do it with a six-foot rope. He's used his body, and he's the guy. We got another foul. He's the guy that's got to neutralize McCrary. That's he's right. St. Louis, his big body. Vincent Jackson's got to have a big game down there. Right. And we, we, know, we know that uh, Munson is going to get his points. He's going to make a lot of hay and so on. So you got to try to stay with him. And right, right. now, right now on the field, Vincent is the high scorer, six, six points. The foul is on Colt Rivers from Goki. That's his first team third. We got three fouls apiece, and Munson... Takes it one from downtown and misses out of bounds to Cahokia. There is, from time to time, if Munson does have another Achilles heel, like we said, a little out of control, we'll, we'll force the shot from deep that maybe isn't necessary. Yeah, he's definitely range limited a little bit, uh, but he's got enough skill uh, to really impress you. Minor off the dribble, no good. Tell you what, Minor. Oh my gosh. Vincent Jackson. Jackson again. Good for that young Jackson man. Jackson on the putback. Boy, he got up and he's sky high. And for 6-6, he's playing above the field out there. 11-6, 128 to go in the first quarter. Here's Dan Williams for three. He's off the mark. Comanches are in the zone. Well, that's got to go. That ball's off of Cahokia. will stay here. That's right. I'll tell you what, the three-point shooters and I got ice in their shoes, John. You bet. And here we go. Comanches have switched off the man-to-man, -man, and they're in a zone right now. They're going to force, force the east side to hit from the outside. Both teams have good ball movement on offense. Another three missed by McCrary. And I here we go. Almost ready to fall out of bounds on that foul. one. He was nudged. He was helped. Let's see who we got. The foul on. Did not see the fouls on. East St. Louis, number 40, Antonio Stewart, his first. Fourth for the Flyers. And John, neither one of these teams live and die by the three, but they certainly incorporate it into their offense. And right now, it's just not falling for either team. Nope. Boy, there's a lot of contact on the perimeter. Good ball movement. There's Austin Dallo. Big, strong move and two points. For Austin, trying to go to the line to finish a three-point play. Yeah. That's a big boy move there, John. It sure is. And 6-7, and he used every inch of it that time. Fouls on East St. Louis. Trevon McCrary, his first. Team fifth. Austin at the line to complete the old-fashioned three-point play. Scott, there's a little bit of a spread happening. A little bit of a spread. It's early. First quarter, 53 seconds to go. He's good from there. We got a 14 to 6 basketball game. Cahokia leads with 51 seconds to go in the first quarter. If you remember, East St. Louis got off to a similar start Wednesday night against Centralia. 
Another missed three by East St. Louis, and they are really struggling from behind the arc. You bet. Need to get the ball down to McCrary, John. Yeah, that uh, that that uh, zone defense they have is really being effective. Here's Austin from the elbow, a fadeaway, no good. Rebound by Stewart from East St. Louis. Munson controls it. They need a basket to finish the quarter here. Here's Dan Williams, big strong move by Williams up and in. May have been some contact. Oh, I tell you no what. No call, but what a great move by Williams. Explosive move to the basket. Here's a three ball on the other end. It's good. Lorenzo Jennings. Boy, he, three. Hit it. he hit it, didn't he? And he's a good shooter. Blocked from behind. Lorenzo Jennings, coach, he's one of the three Cahokia Comanches shooting from better than 50% from behind three. Well, we had a little bit of an offensive uh, spurt by both teams in the last minute and a half there. Absolutely. Not so many turnovers. One of the things that I'm impressed with right now uh, that explains maybe the 17 to 8 spread, Cahokia on top, is the fact that they're playing a very effective zone. We've got East Side out front with three players, and they're being stymied by just two. And the big man, McCrary, for East St. Louis underneath, he's got to come through three people to get to the iron. Absolutely. Hey, the story of the first quarter to me, Vincent Jackson. Oh, this guy showed up to play tonight. Three for four from the field early. He's already shooting 75%. And the one miss, barely missed. That's right. This guy can, this guy can play. You know, there's just so many guys on the floor that can play basketball. It's hard to highlight a couple. But I'm telling you what. If there was something that was going to give one of these teams an advantage tonight, it was somebody we didn't talk about was going to have to step up and make some noise. I don't disagree with you one bit, and, and I'm waiting waiting for uh, some penetration from East St. Louis because right now Cahokia has stymied that as well. We're going to wait for uh, Deshaun to be able to go ahead and penetrate, and that's his bread and butter, but so far he hasn't been really effective at doing so. A secondary note, East St. Louis has to knock down some shots from the perimeter. But in the meantime, they've got to get the ball down to McCrary. He's their go-to guy in the paint. And if anybody's going to equalize Jackson, it's got to be him. Here's Jackson controlling the ball out top. Not where he does work usually. Off the mark there, he might have forced that one. I think he did a little bit and so on. It was a little bit of a fadeaway. There was a lot of traffic. Maybe another dribble and another step is what he was looking for. Who's going to take command for the Flyers? Here's Williams for three. No good. Ball's over the top, out of bounds. Sure enough, right now, the Comanches have the Flyers trying to drain threes, and that's not their strength. No score yet in this second quarter. Here's Rivers controlling the ball way up top here near midcourt. Vincent Jackson. He's touched it about every possession. Back to Rivers. This is inside to Austin. Big strong move inside up the oh, head. Yeah. That was a him. pro move. A pro move right there. Well, he's a junior, John. Five or six Division I offers already. The kid can play. East St. Louis has got to get something done on the offensive end. This one could get out of hand early. Another missed opportunity for the Flyers as they try the LU pass. It was guarded well, now minor controls. Minor up top, tries to dribble his way around traffic, around Dan Williams. He goes to the lane up and no good, but foul. There's a foul, big John McCurry. Looks like I McCurry think. got him with the body. Tell you what, you know, Koki out to an 11-point lead without much from Keenan Miner so far. No, that's right. He's kind of been a silent spectator at this point. Miner at the line. That's a good shot. You know, free throws may indeed become a factor if this game gets tight. Here is Miner, because there certainly is enough contact to result in some fouls. Boy, that was uncharacteristic. Another turnover it went off of McCrary's hands, and it ended up in the Comanche's possession. They appear to be playing in a much more controlled fashion at this point. They're getting some results. There's another turnover, though, as soon as we set it. Comanches turn it over. 
Trevon McCrary at top controls the ball. Looking to set up an offense, calls a play. On the wing to Stewart. Stewart looks inside to Big McCrary. He's going to try to make something happen down there. We got to yeah. travel. Yeah, we had to walk. I mean, he took a step before he decided to dribble it. Yeah. They, uh, they have really uh, frustrated uh, Mr. McCrary so far. There's a lot of basketball to go, and there's a lot of John McCrary to go, too. There's enough of him to go around, isn't there, John? Yes, indeed. Keenan Miner from Belleville. And it's good! Hey. Wow! He hit that shot, John. That's a 28-foot three-pointer. It almost qualified for a four-pointer, didn't it? Munson in the lane. Oh, up and a sweet move oh, by him. Okay. All right. To equalize. That was a nice yeah. job by him. That's what he needs to do, attack the basket. You will not find that move in a box of uh, box of Cracker Jacks, but it was a Cracker Jack move. Three ball for Cahokia off the mark, and there is, there is Vincent Jackson. My goodness. You know, his, his per game average is 12.1 points per game, and here we are with five minutes left in the second quarter. He's already at a 10 spot. <laughs> he is for real. Six eleven, Cahokia. Five oh six left to go in the second period. A fifteen point lead for Cahokia early going. McCurry misses them both. That ball is out of bounds, off of Cahokia. We're going to stay here. You know that was a, that was a close call. It was a good call by the ref, and Vincent Jackson just congratulated the ref on that good call. Inbounding from the end line. It goes deep, waving the backboard. Michael Scott will control it. They've got to get something going here. Take advantage of the missed opportunity by Cahokia. Here's Munson on the baseline. I think he stepped out of bounds. Sure did. We're going to go to Cahokia. Un unforced errors have been a problem so far. Yeah, yeah. The bread and butter, the stuff that uh, you know that they have instinctively do, uh, they're just not pulling off. They're just a little bit an, an inch off or a step short. East St. Louis with their eighth turnover, John. No, that won't make many coaches happy, will it? Three ball off the mark. Big McCrary with the rebound. He brings it up over to McCrary. Inside with a nice move. He's fouled by McKaylin Raymond from Cahokia. Yeah, Travon, uh, that was a very nice move, a very slashing move and so on as he came in hard from the left side. Yeah, good strong move by the little guy. It was, absolutely. He's a nice free throw shooter at 78%. Off the mark on the first one. Jinxed him, John. Be interested to see what East St. Louis does here. Certainly got off to a slow start Wednesday night. Same thing tonight. They were able to work their way back into a halftime lead oh. Wednesday. We'll see what they did. Back in Big John oh, McCurry. Boy, he was. They wrote a song about him, Big John, I think. <laughs> and he got in there, and he had his way. There we go. I'll tell you what, both guys pushing and shoving there. They give the call. Yeah. Trevon was a little bit too aggressive on the defense McCurry. and stuff, throwing yeah. a little bit of hip and shoulder on the ball carrier. Sorry for the confusion, folks. There are two McCrarys in the game for East St. Louis. Number three is Trevon McCrary, and 33 is Johnny McCrary. We're not sure of the relation, uh, but we will be saying the word McCrary a lot, and we could be referring to either one, so hopefully you're tuned in and paying attention. At the line for Cahokia, Darius Austin. Munson controls the ball. Down the court to McCrary. He misses. Big McCrary underneath, rebounds, and gets loose. Puts it back out. Up to top to Scott to Deshaun Munson. Up and in. What a move. 
Tell you what, the kid can make something happen. I tell you what, that is very solid. I mean, he played guard, he played forward, and he finally played center, and he got on there and hit something real short on a penetration. Austin for three, way outside for the big man. Vincent Jackson with an offensive rebound, no shot, I think he's fouled. I got a score update, folks, from from Pekin, Illinois, in the 4A sectional final. Edwardsville 35, Rock Island 12, early on in the second quarter. How about that, I tell you what, another one of these southern teams making hay. I'll tell you this, John, just from being around Coach Waldo at Edwardsville, uh, the time I was, and, and, and certainly learned a lot from a guy like that, but there won't be anybody more prepared than that man. And I really think he's at an advantage when he's playing teams that don't know anything about him. Here's Jackson at the line. He makes the first. He'll shoot another. How about that? He's one point away from his game average with only 3.58 left in the second quarter. I don't think that they uh, made adequate plans to defend this man tonight. They might have been looking a little bit too much at, um, Almost. at, Ke at Keenan. Well... I agree with that, John, and I just don't think East St. Louis has found anything to get into a rhythm as of yet. There's nothing nope. really working great uh, <laughs> except for that. Yeah, that was a pretty smooth <laughs> move there, wasn't it? Dan Williams, and just yeah. such an athletic, competitive kid. It He's is, one of those kids. And you know you got to respect him coming in because the guy's got 33 assists, and on, on a penetration, you don't know if he's going to dish or dunk. Well, uh, just like that, John, 10-point ball game. Oh, uh, yeah. As I say that, yeah. nice move uh, by Dorenzo Jennings up yeah. in for two to yeah. kind of and, and Big John McCrary was coming over, and he was going to stop that. But speed kills, and it got around. Uh, there's Big John underneath. But John's blocked. There goes Cahokia the other way, and he gets hammered by Williams. I don't know who they're going to call the foul on. <laughs> he got hammered by two or three guys. Look like they were doing the Harlem Shake over there. I think it was. I tell you what, the Elite Eight, the cheering section for the east side, they were over there, and they don't know which way the call should have gone. But the refs do, and they're sending number 21 to the line. Lorenzo Looks like Jennings. they called it on 25. Free St. Louis, that was on Williams. Yep. His second. Team ninth. 87% free throw shooter. So we should expect a couple of good shots. And we deep Up and in. Automatic. <laughs> Looking down at the coaches and so on. They're both very active on the sideline. Both very active. Koki usually has two or three coaches active, John. They certainly do. They have do. all kinds of guys giving direction. They certainly do. Second one's off the mark. Looks like the rebound to Stewart from East St. Louis. He'll try to control, but then over to number five, Justin Smith. Smith didn't get much action on Wednesday. We'll see if he can add a spark. Here is Munson. He's going to try to take him off the dribble, and he does. Nice one-handed move. Off the mark, though. Rebound to Vincent. Darius Austin. Oh, sorry, yeah, that's right, 23. And now the ball's Austin busting goes, up. Austin goes, oh, and he kicks it out to a wide open. We got a whistle. We got a whistle here, not sure. Looks like it's an offensive foul and on uh, Austin. Yep. Yeah, it looked like he was trying to go coast to coast, and he did penetrate, and then he kicked it out to the wing. Yeah, I saw. But, a guy, uh, I didn't see the foul, John. I saw a guy laying on the ground. Yeah. That's his second, team six. Yeah. On the shot, uh, he, uh, he wanted where the other guy was standing, so he kind of nudged him out of the way. 2.45 to go, second quarter. Cahokia 30, East St. Louis 17. Deshaun Munson controls the ball, brings it up the port, just court just past the M. Down in the corner to McCrary. Ball finds its way for a three over to Smith. It's blocked. Yeah, you'd think Smith was in the safety zone out there because uh, he's only 5'6", and he had a good open shot. He's called Rivers for three. He can really stroke it too from out there. Rebound so to Scott. Uh -oh. Off his knee, that's going to go back to Cahokia. Off yep. his own leg. You know, what really impresses me is that the, at the breakneck speed that they're playing right here, the refs are making some really, really snap calls and so on. These players, they're classy because they don't argue with the refs. They go and they bow their neck and they play some hard basketball. Well, their job is to play. And uh, certainly these coaches have done a good job of explaining that to their kids. They play basketball and everything else take care of itself. This guy from three again. That is Lorenzo Jennings. Another three ball. He's got nine. Yeah, and you know, Cahokia just continues to <laughs> pour it on. You know, uh, Jennings is a, a, a wonderful shooter from the field. His uh, his field goal average 
as uh, or he's 94 percent, 94 percent at two point range, and he stepped out and drained a three that time. It was sweet. Yeah, he likes to sit up down there on the uh, on the baseline, and that's his spot. And he's I don't know how many he's taken from there tonight, but he's hit three of them. Yeah, he and, sure uh, has. And, and he will keep shooting that ball. He sure has. You know, coupled with East St. Louis uh, frustrations on on the offensive side, they got to find some way to shut down this uh, this juggernaut on uh, uh, Cahokia that's uh, just scoring almost at will. I mean, their their efficiency of possessions has really improved from those initial ones where we had a turnover after turnover. Well, the most impressive thing to me, Keenan Miner, uh, their guy, pretty much. I don't want to say irrelevant, but they've scored other ways. I mean, they're getting the ball in the paint down to Jackson, down to Austin. They're kicking it out here. You got Jennings knocking it down with three. They're doing it with everybody. Yep, yep. Munson controls the ball at the point. The zone has been very effective. To McCrary, back to Munson. Over to McCrary. Munson in the lane. That's where he likes to take the basketball, and he misses a layup. He has got to have those go down for the Flyers to stay in this one. Here's Jennings again. He misses a three, a long-range three. Miner gets knocked out of bounds. Okay, they're going to give the ball to East St. Louis. Could have called a foul there, John, but yeah. I understand. Bang, bang, play. Ball's out of bounds. Right. Nice job by them. Yeah. Again, communicating and making the right call. Yeah, absolutely, and I think the uh, I think the Cahokia coach and so on, Darren, uh, he probably would like to have that possession done again. That was down. It was a one and done, one and done, and he, he had indicated he doesn't want to see that happening. That's up and in by McCrary oh. and a foul. The foul's going to be on Carlton Rivers, I believe. Yes, Carlton Rivers. The big man, Johnny McCrary, goes to the line to finish the three-point play. You know, and once again, they got a chance to cut into the lead. That's think, what they need to do, John. Yeah. He is slowly sneaking into a position where he's going to be a big factor and so on. Well, McCray you, made this free throw, made it a conventional three-point, and he's already on the board for nine points. Yeah. If you go back to the conversation we had with Coach Young, he talked about attacking the basket. They've done a good job attacking the basket. The ball's just not going in the rim, and that's going to be an issue if they can't drop him in there. Yeah. Here yeah. is yeah. Miner again from way downtown. Oh he misses. God. He's off the mark. Great rebound. Uh Miner again. He usually ain't. I tell you what. I tell you what, John. That's Miner two in a row. That just does not happen yeah, from him. Yeah. Shooting 65% from three tonight. Not tonight, his night from back there. Not even close tonight. Not even close. And we got a foul underneath. I think they called that on Munson. That's his first. Yeah. And Vincent Jackson's going to go to the line, trying to score, uh, trying to tie his game average. He's got 11 on the board right now. This will be for 12. A little bit misses left. First one's no good. He'll reload for the second. 33 to 20, Cahokia, 109 left in the first half. That one's good. There we go. Extends the lead to 14. It's 34 20, 108 to go. Munson controls the ball. At the top of the key. Down low inside oh, to Stewart. Shot. Nice job. Antonio oh, Stewart, one of the unsung guys we talked about. Maybe he can give him a spark. Yeah, it sure was. That was a very nice pass. Nice feed by uh, by Mr. Munson. Well, he's a 6'5 senior, and, and, and he's obviously doesn't want to play his last game as a flyer. We're spreading things out a little bit. Maybe waiting for one shot. What do you think, Scott? I don't know. We'll see. I, neither one of these teams is a typical spread team, but uh, at, at this point, who knows? Miner in the lane, up and kind of out of control, but he gets bumped. He is. He's going to go to the line for two, I believe. I believe it's on 40. Stewart, it is. His second. That's the tenth foul on East St. Louis. Everything here from here on out will be two shots for the Flyers. Mm -hmm. well, we've got 33 seconds to go. Miner makes the first. 
up by 13. You got to say, Coach Nash is going to be pretty pleased with the way the first half has gone. But we got another half of basketball waiting for us. Right, he's a pretty calm guy in general when we speak with him. I'm sure that that'll be his message at halftime. Don't get too high and certainly stay within yourself. The second one was good. Munson with a nice feed. Oh. What a I nice feed down to Stewart. That's why he did triple doubles, John. Yeah, yeah. and they are just uh, respecting his penetrating ability. They're coming out and meeting him, out and defending the perimeter and so on, and he's, he's just feeding people. They need a stop. They need a stop, and they got one. Here they come the other way, the Flyers. Here is Smith. Smith over to Stewart. Looks to take a three. Back to Smith. He's going to let one go. That's off the mark. Rebound, Cahokia. Five seconds to go on the ground. Jump ball. That ball stays here, 4.1 to go, East St. Louis basketball. A bucket here could get it to within 10. Okay. I wonder, I, I, I've got my money saying that, that maybe going to Johnny McCrary, of course, or their go-to guy, would the be classic go-to guy be 35. Sure, wouldn't would be, would be shocked that all of Munson touches this ball. They're going to try to go to McCrary. They get it out to Munson. Munson definitely going to take the last shot here. He's off balance. He lets one go. Off the mark. Yep, not going to happen off the iron. The halftime score from Mascuta, Cahokia 36, East St. Louis 24. We'll hop out of here for a short moment here. We'll be back with you shortly to break down the first half action from Mascuta High School. You are watching and listening to the IHSA Class 3A Mascuta Sectional Championship. Again, Cahokia 36, East St. Louis 24. We'll be back in a moment.
Folks, we're back up with a minute and 50 seconds before the start of the second half of this contest with uh, the Cokia Comanches leading 36 over the East St. Louis Flyers with 24. Just a moment just to reflect uh, for the, those of you that are classic sports fans and so on. As uh, Scott Battis said before the contest and so on, these are some pretty tremendous uh, programs out here. Uh, that we're watching tonight, having the pleasure to watch. But uh, they go back a little ways, and uh, some of the stats that you might find interesting. Uh, the Comanches started their basketball program 57 years ago, and they've got 657 victories under their belts. Uh, the big name in the coaching ranks was Earl Lee, who coached for 11 years from 1957 to 1968 and notched 165 of those victories, so almost a quarter of them in that 11-year uh, span. But the Flyers have a pretty outstanding statistic, too. Basketball's been alive and well at East St. Louis for 74 years, 1,122 victories. And for 31 years, we can go ahead and assign 31 years worth of those victories to Lewis Pick Derner with 508. Yeah, Lewis, Lewis, Lewis was the man. Lewis was the man, and uh, you know what? Uh, if it's going to be 1,123, then the Flyers need to pick it up just a little bit more in the second half. I agree. A couple scores uh, from around the state. The winner of this game will play the winner of the Mount Zion sectional championship between Chatham Glenwood and Champaign Centennial. That'll be uh, Tuesday night in Springfield. Uh, a halftime score there. Chatham Glenwood leads Champaign Centennial 27-19. Uh, Centennial, uh, the number one seed, and Chatham Glenwood, who's already pulled two Reasonable upsteps, maybe three to this point, has a chance to knock off their second number one seed tonight. They lead at halftime 27-19. And From I tell you what, they know about winning championships because they got in the last two years a baseball championship and a stocker championship for the state level. Uh, they do. Level. They do. The, uh, the score we have from the Pekin sectional in that championship game, a halftime score, Edwardsville leaves Rock Island 40-20. Probably surprising some people. John Rock Island is a respected team up north. Um, and a lot of times the southern teams don't get a lot of respect. Obviously, uh, uh, they're taking a few notes tonight. That's right. Well, you know what? you got to respect any team that does their talking on the court yeah. and so on uh, uh, by the way they play ball. And Edwardsville is a class program. So hopefully they can carry our standard and get it up to, uh, get it up to the state contest. That's right. East St. Louis certainly struggling in the first half. They, have, they are 5 for 12 from the free throw line at 42%. They have nine five, have 10 team fouls. They've turned the ball over eight times, and Deshaun Munson with six points certainly has to get it going for them to have a shot in the second half. Yeah, he certainly does. He's trying to be a factor, and as a matter of fact, he is a factor as far as drawing a lot of the defense to him when he comes rushing the ball up. Uh, he was a successful addition a couple of times to Big John McCrary and so on, but uh, it's got to be more routine, and they've got to cut down on the turnovers. On the other hand, Cahokia, couldn't have asked for a better half. In particular from their role guys, Vincent Jackson, out of nowhere, didn't even talk about him at the beginning of the game. He's got 12 points. Their leader, their all-state candidate uh, in uh, minor, he's got nine points. Not shabby, but not the Keenan minor that we expected to see tonight. Yeah. Furthermore, Jennings, three threes already from the corner. He got hot. I expect a lot of the same thing in the second half. Why change what's working? I do too, yeah. You don't want to mess with success. Uh, we, uh, I would also anticipate perhaps that, uh, maybe the, some of the emotions got played out a little bit. The game is going to back itself off to a little bit more moderate pace. The players are going to be able to control the action rather than let the action control them as much. I agree. And, and you know, let's be honest. Uh, the second half of a basketball game, you really find out a lot about the coaches. What are they willing to do at halftime to make a difference? Do they make adjustments? Is Cahokia fine with what they're doing? Do they stick to the same plan? Do they change some things? We know East St. Louis is going to make some adjustments. Tony Young made that clear. That's what he feels like one of his strong suits are. He's done that. We'll see what he has. Okay, folks, we have a short delay uh, uh, currently. We have some gum on the, on the playing surface that they're trying to remove. We'll stay with you on the air and, uh, and bring in the action momentarily here. The fine custodial staff, even the athletic director, Fritz Holcomb out there with a broom. You know, a man of many talents. So. Look, look, at that, look at that footwork, yeah. John. I tell you what, that's it. It's very smooth, and it looks like lawnmowers mowing Augusta National. They've got three brooms out there in formation. 
And the coaches are certainly taking advantage of this slight delay. They're going up and, and, and laying some last minute bits of wisdom to their team. Yeah. Uh, East St. Louis uh, uh, coaches out there and uh, uh, Coach Young, he, he's really got his, his, his group uh, very focused and so on. Over here, uh, Coach Nash is doing the same thing. Looks a little bit more casual about it and so on. Uh, but I'm sure both teams, both teams are pretty hyped to get back up and get started again. Speaking of Coach Young, just a little bit of history. If uh, for those local Southern Illinois basketball fans, you might remember the name Tony Young. He starred for SIU Carbondale for several years, played in a few NCAA tournament games with that team. Uh, certainly known well in the southern part of the state. Uh, East St. Louis delighted to have him. And at the end of the bench, uh, someone that uh, that you know. Rick Suttle. Rick Suttle. Rick Suttle. And I, I, my, my dad tells me stories all the time. My, my dad, an assumption grad. Certainly stories of Rick Suttle and the boys. Right. Uh, part, right. Of the, part of the uh, uh, regime with all the success some time ago. All right. Here we go. Carlton Rivers is inbounded. And the man has the ball. Tina Meyer. Let's see if he can jumpstart himself in the second half. East side still staying in that matchup. One on one. This is... Jackson, probably the player of the half in the first half. Oh, nice cut by Austin. I saw it coming oh, the whole way up oh and in. Goodness. Great job by him. You know what? I hope they didn't leave defense in the locker room. They've got to play some defense to catch up. Good job by Vincent Jackson. Uh, unselfish pass on the cutter. This is Scott over to Munson. Comanche is still staying in that zone, Scott. And it's a 2-3, and it's been very effective. Well, East St. Louis is going to have to hit from the outside. Stepped on the line. Out of bounds in the ball to Cahokia. Carlton Rivers are inbound. 38-24, Cahokia, 7.05 to go. Third quarter action live from Mascuda High School in the Class 3A boys basketball sectional final. Three ball on the way, no good. Uh, rebound Munson, uh -huh. he's taking it the other way. Yeah, yeah, he's already in fifth gear. Here Gives comes McCrary off the glass and in. Nice job by the big man. Pretty sweet move. Boy, he's got body control when he gets up too, doesn't he? Yes, he does. He, very he's athletic. Very graceful, very graceful. That's not a small man either, John. That's, uh, that's a 6'5", a 240-pound guy that I wish I had on my offensive line. There we go, and he drew a foul too. The foul on Cahokia, yep, it Gary was, Hickman, I believe, and that's his first. Yeah, three-quarter length pass, and Big John went up to kind of swat it out of the air and got a little bit of help while he was airborne. And here we go, John, another opportunity for the Flyers to cut it to 10. This is Scott. Over to Munson. All the way across the court to McCrary. Munson, his second cross-court pass, same result. Inside to Dan Williams, and he's fouled. Good strong move by the senior. It was a nice move. Very At nice. the line for two, Williams, the foul on Vincent Jackson, his second. Scott, we're going to be looking, I'm sure, for uh, the big three on inside there, uh, Williams, uh, McCrary, and Deshaun Munson, to be putting the ball through the hoop. We got one I agree. three. We got uh, Michael Scott and Trevon McCrary. And they're out front, and uh, you know between them, they are only averaging uh, less than eight points a game. But I tell you what, they know their role, and that's to assist and get that ball in the hands of the big men where they can make hay. Absolutely, there's two made free throws by Williams. We got a 10-point game, John. 38-28, 6:08 to go, third quarter. Here comes Kahoki in transition. Out to Rivers. Rivers covered by McCrary. Oh, Keenan Meyer, an off-balance three. It's no good. Rebound by Jackson up and in. Oh, what a job. And the, and the yell afterwards. And we got some With emotion. Authority. We got some emotion from that young man. 14 points right now. He is the factor. He is not the X factor. He is the and factor. Here's Munson underneath. Good strong. Maurice foul. And a bucket. Got a chance to cut it to nine. Deshaun Munson underneath. Yep. For the basket, he's fouled. He's fouled by Vincent Jackson, coach. And that's Jackson's second foul and two trips. He's got three. That's a concern for Cahokia. Yep, absolutely. You know, in that way, the penetration was from the side by uh, Dunstan at that time. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, by Deshaun. 
penetration was along the baseline. Normally he comes straight up and straight at you. This time he kind of shifted in from the side. Here, made it count. here is Munson with a chance to cut it to single digits, and he does. It's a nine-point game, 5.38 to go, third quarter. He St. Louis snaps that. And the ball is again. loose, and they call a touch foul here. Yeah. I don't know, John. The ball was loose. That's a tough call. It is. I tell you, East St. Louis right now, I mean, they are pressing. They're trying to uh, recreate some of that turnover scenarios earlier that we saw in the game. But, you know, uh, to be honest with you, the press is not exceptionally effective. It doesn't seem to slow down the Comanches. Well, so. we talked about it earlier. What is what is Coach going to do at halftime different? Well, apply more pressure. And he said the other night when we talked to him, his, his, his design was going to be to attack Okia. He's doing it in the second half so far. Trap, and a loose ball to Munson. We're going to get a slam jam rim here. There it is. Okay, uh -huh. Yep. Munson with an electrifying jam. Minor controlling and Cahokia a little shaken up right now. Let's see if they can. Hey, turn it over again. Here we go the other way. That was Austin turning it over to Munson. To the basket, up. No good. We get a block. That going to go on minor. The Elite Eight have the St. Louis faithful up off their seats. I talked about the Harlem Shake earlier. It's coming. We got a timeout on the floor. Cahokia trying to stop the momentum with a timeout. Coach Nash not happy about something. But, Coach, the momentum is starting to turn a little bit. That's it. That's it. That pendulum swings both ways. And East St. Louis, uh, I'm still waiting for them to go ahead and make a statement on defense, but on offense, they are definitely picking it up. Well, they're attacking the basket. The foul is on Miner, his second. The lead is seven. Munson, the star at East St. Louis, goes to the line for two. This could be a five-point game with about four to go. Yeah, and you know, one of the things, too, Scott, that we haven't seen that I think maybe Coach might have addressed, we haven't seen him launching those uh, you know, cruise missiles from outside of the arc. Uh, they've been going down low. They've been getting it inside penetrating on the uh, uh, from the front and the side and they've been making some free throws anything they're doing is closing the gap let's see if Munson can add to his total of nine nobody really in foul trouble they're gonna go ahead and play and I, I wouldn't be surprised to see it even get more physical as we move in later in the game here Munson misses the first and hey, you mentioned it before the game that's been a that's been an issue yeah 43 percent from the line but he, what, a, what a sparkling performer he is on all other parts of the court. The second from Munson is, is I don't think it hit anything, John. Nope, nope. Hit the front of the net. He's going to hear about that one from the Cahokia faithful. That's okay. Give him something to shout about here. Nevertheless, seven-point lead, East St. Louis. 4.51 to go, third quarter. This is Austin. And Miner to the top of the key. Picks up his dribble over to Rivers. Rivers to Miner. Surprised he didn't pull that from there. Miner back to the top of the key, out by the M. This is Carlton Rivers. Miner off there the dribble go. drive. No Car shot. We got a foul on the floor. Looks like it's going to go on Williams. Yep, it sure is. As a matter of fact, he juked him and got him airborne. And uh, let's see. Mr. Williams then reached out with a hand. That and is said, Williams. That's his third, Coach. Yep. Tried to grab a piece of Miner as he tried to go by. Inbounding from the sideline, though. Cart River, Carlton Rivers to inbound. He does so to Dorenzo Jennings. Into Austin at the elbow. He dribbles around. Up and no good. Ball to Munson. And boy, was he. <laughs> okay, we got a poke foul inside. Got contact. Yeah. Coach Munson's hand was three inches above the rim for that rebound. It sure was. It sure was, and he brings it down with authority, doesn't he? All of a sudden, Coach, Darius Austin with three fouls, Vincent Jackson with three fouls. That could become an issue here late in the game. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. This is Williams down to McCreary, and he kicked it out of bounds. We're coming back this way. There we go. Let's see, what, let's see if this press can be any more effective. East St. Louis doing a better job of attacking the basket this period and finishing. They've got, that was the difference in the first yeah, half. Yeah, they've almost got five defenders in the front court, in the back court. Now the ball crosses half court. This is Miner from 25 feet, no good. Rebound East St. Louis. Uh-oh, 
Here we go, Munson the other way. Reverse left, good, and the foul. Boy, that was a pretty sweet move and so on. And he got, on the way up, he had some contact, and he just kept on going, just like the ever ready bunny. And he got high and very gracefully just slipped it in the hoop. John, that's on Carl Rivers. That's his third foul. All of a sudden, Jackson, Rivers, Darius Austin, all with three fouls. Munson finishes the three-point play. Yep. 40 to 36, Cahokia, 342 to go, third quarter. We got a basketball game. We sure do. We sure do. Here it comes. Minor. We're waiting for him to start influencing things. Here's Minor. Off balance, turned him over. He finds it. And we got a foul on Munson. I, I, Coach, I don't like that call. That no, ball is loose. That, there's guys sweeping for the ball, and I understand what they're saying there. But there's too many guys with their hands going for the basketball to call a foul on one guy. Yeah, it was. As a matter of fact, the ball was bouncing and, and really. Kids in this situation playing a big game like this. Rivers inbounds under the basket to Miner. That foul, by the way, on Munson is his third. Miner to go. the basket. All right, that's bread and butter right there. He came around that right side with authority and then went up high on the glass. Oh, and they needed a basket bad. Here's Munson down to McCurry, up and in and good. Now, Scott, that's exactly what they it was their bread and butter in the last contest. Penetration by Munson. Again, Big John comes in on the baseline, gets a sweet feed, goes up off the glass, two points. Folks, if this is your first time seeing Munson play basketball, if there's any question whether he's an authentic triple-double guy, this is why. This guy can dish the basketball, he can shoot it, he can rebound. The guy is legitimate. Here's McCrary at the line to finish the three-point play. That's the second foul on Gary Hickman. He misses. Ball bounces around, controlled by Austin to Rivers. Here they come. East St. Louis dropping back. It's a soft press, if, if anything. It's more man-to-man. -man. Here is Miner, their all-state candidate. Over to Jennings. He drives. Ball's turned over again. I don't know how many turnovers that is this quarter, but they have several. Uh, we got it poked out of bounds. It looks like East Side's going to stay under control of it here. Uh, I think if you're East St. Louis here, you want a good possession. They're inbounding on their own end of the court. You kind of got Cahokia on their heels right now. And here's a three ball right out of the gate. And it's oh, good! Oh, baby. The little man, Trayvon McCreary for three. That's right. That is his first bucket of the game, and it is huge, John. That's right. And, and on the other end. On the other hand, 14. He dumps it in, Gary Hickman. Great job by Cahokia to answer that. That could have really been detrimental if they turned it over here on this possession. Yeah, you know, Trevon, is, uh, he's one of the assist leaders with 74 for East Side, and he gets that ball, and he's not even thinking assist. He's thinking launch it and score, and both, he certainly did. Both crowds starting to heat up here. It's starting to get loud. This game's getting tight. This is what it's all about. 2.35 to go in the third. Misses the free throw. Munson controls it. Free Another throws. rebound for Munson, by the way. Free throws are going to be so important. McCrary with stand. great hands underneath. Another three for McCrary. Oh, all okay. of a sudden, East St. Louis with a three-point lead, John. Yeah, Trevon, 5-9. He's going to shoot his height in points. we got a foul underneath. Boy, it's, getting, it's not getting ragged. It is just plain man-on-man -man basketball out there. Uh, they had the score wrong, John. I apologize. We've got a tie ball game. They gave the three points to the wrong team. It's 44 to 44. We're all tied up. 2.13 left to go third quarter, folks. I hope you don't need to grab a snack or anything out of the fridge because this one's getting tight. It certainly is. It certainly is. Camacho's going to inbound from the end line and so on. And this is one of the things that I think the coaches have talked with them about. Hey, we got to have some set half-court offense, and this is an opportunity to see it. The inbound is underneath. That's out to Jennings. Tremendous movement away from the ball. Over to Austin. He waits for movement and kicks it out to Miner. Miner just under the elbow. There we go. For two. I tell you, that's money right there. A little 14-foot punch shot. He stopped and popped. Everybody else was on the floor just watching him score. Munson into the lane. Off balance. Good. 
I tell you what. That's a nice runner there by the All-State guy. That, that was prototype. That was like NASCAR passing somebody. He passed the field and went up softly off the glass. Here's Rivers. Over to Miner, down to Rivers. Jennings, off the dribble, trying to fight his way down the lane. He turns, oh, and he gets bailed out. Yeah. He gets bailed out. He's completely out of control underneath on the baseline and bailed out on a foul. You know what? Sometimes, I mean, these guys have such body control when they go up, though, Scott, and you yeah. know. Uh, oh, there was that, certainly. Uh, yeah, there was, all, there was all kinds of potential for scoring yeah. on that shot, and there was body on the shooter. Yeah, absolutely. There absolutely. There was contact. Uh, a little out of control, but you know what? That's, East St. Louis has to stay disciplined down there. They got a sure turnover, and they used their body to uh, uh, get them into trouble there. They're going to inbound under the basket. This is Rivers. He gives it to Austin. Austin trying to work his way into the paint, up and in. Uh, it's no good. There we go. There's going to be a foul. Rim. Thought it went in from this angle. We're up behind the backboard up here on the south end of the gym, or the west end of the gym, and uh, thought it fell, but it didn't. At the line for two, Darius Austin. That foul, John, was on Williams. That's his fourth. Yep. Be interesting to see what they do with him. I would think he's going to sit down for a little bit here. You know, either that or they're going to pull him back out of that press a little bit. The shot is good. One point lead for Cahokia. It's 47 46. 121 to go, third quarter. That one's no good. Rebound, Big McCrary. Here is Munson controlling the point. Oh. Good job off yeah, the dribble, yeah. and he draws a foul. And he drew that one. Yeah, yeah, he sure did. Hickman uh, kind of had uh, was trying to get in his jersey a little bit as he came around the top of the key. Uh, so he'll go to the line. I tell you what, as long as he can continue to make his free throws, he is going to get going to get his uh, contact and his uh, his trips to the line. Yeah, he's done a nice job. You know, we talk. It's funny you talk about McCrary. You talk about Munson early on before they even went on the air. They each have 14 points, yeah. and they're leading this comeback. Yeah, and he makes the free throw. High game. We're back knotted at 47. There's a minute and 14 seconds to go. Third quarter, Munson. And a chance to give East St. Louis their first lead of the night. That one's good. Yes, sir. And here we go. East St. Louis has dropped back out of that press. Now they're kind of setting up. They're going to match up one-on-one. Now they're in a zone. Two-three uh, zone. Yeah, matchup zone. Yep. Trap. It's tipped by East St. Louis, and it's going to stay with Cahokia. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm not a basketball expert. Matter of fact, not even close. Looks like they're in a matchup zone trying to get a trap. I agree. I agree. And they certainly did. They got enough to they, they pin the guy against the sideline. Cahokia's got some great ball movement, though. They, they got great perimeter movement, and they got shooters. They do. And there was one with the ball right there in minor. The ball over two rivers. Another guy that can knock them down. All three guys around the three-point arc right here, right now, shoot over 50%. 30 seconds to go. One point late, East St. Louis, 25 seconds to go, third quarter. Here is Colton Rivers, and he knocks down a three-pointer. Going the other way to McCrary. Yep. He's up, and in! Boy, that didn't take long, did it? That took what a great seconds. job. 10 seconds to go, 50 to 50. We're all tied up in sectional championship basketball at Mascuda. Here's a long three by Jennings, no good. Off the mark, rebound, East St. Louis. There we go. We're going we're gonna to shut it down for this third quarter, and the score's nodded. Who would have ever thought? John, you got a 3A sectional championship. Maybe the two best teams in the state in 3A. Who knows? You got a packed house. You got a tie ball game. There's eight minutes to play. It's anybody's basketball game. And I got to tell you, uh, from our perspective up here, Scott, watching the coaches and so on, we got uh, the uh, a Comanche coach, uh, Coach Nash, and he's very, very calm about things. He's um, he's actually kind of calming his players down. 
Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, East St. Louis coach down on the other end, uh, Coach Young and so on, he's keeping those fires burning. He's really trying to stroke it and keep those guys coming out so that they're flaming hot. Of course, in the pregame, he indicated we got to come out hard, and I guess he intends that we got to finish hard. Coach, we talked about before the game, Deshaun Munson's the key. In the third quarter comeback, he has 10 points, knocks down his free throws, he went in the locker room and came out a different player. Yeah, and, and really, when he's on, there's no answer to him. Yeah. There's no answer. Now, he does have three fouls, so there is some concern on the East St. Louis end, and they've also got a little bit of trouble with Williams with four. But Cahokia has all kinds of trouble himself, guys, with three fouls. Here we go, John. Anything can happen. How about it? How about it? Well, Cahokia sets up in that zone. It's worked pretty well. Off the dribble. Off balance. Wow, Antonio Stewart. We talked about him in the first half. That was a very sweet shot. I tell yeah. you what, it was a little bit off balance, but he kissed it off the glass, and they watched it go in. Here is Miner. The cross court, that's going to be intercepted. John. Look at that man. He's like a giant condor out there with the way he gets up in the air. Coach, I don't know if he plays football, <laughs> but uh, my friend uh, Darren Suckett there at East St. Louis, if he does it, he needs to get on the phone tomorrow with that young man. Here we go, another turnover. We don't want this to happen a lot. I take that back. He's a senior. Yep. <laughs> How about Here that? Here is Austin in the lane. That was a one sweet feed. Great feed and a great slash by Austin to get inside. At 6'7", there's no one that's going to get up on top and block that shot. As a matter of fact, there haven't been many blocks tonight. We're tied again. 52 all. 6.59 to go. Fourth quarter. Here is Munson. Here's a three ball. Oh, baby. Oh, Ron oh, McCray. McCray. A 5'9 senior. Again, and boy, there's another guy, John. He has stepped up in the second half, hasn't he? You're not kidding. Jenny oh, answers with a three of his own. Yeah, well, we know, we know that Jennings uh, had it in him here, a six-foot senior. And wow. He, he stops. And he just drains it from three. Munson in the lane. No good. It's out. Rolls around with his own rebound. He's battling it side up and in. My goodness. Boy, is that a good <laughs> physical. <laughs> I think he had three people on guarding him, but they couldn't stop him. Well, getting his own rebound. What a great job battling through traffic. Here's Miner inside. He misses. Ball about around. Looked like they were out of bounds, but saved it. This is Miner to Jennings. A long three by Jennings. It's good. Oh, yeah. Mr. Dennings, Treeville, six foot senior. Cahokia with a 58 56 lead, 5.55 to go. John, they weren't hot shooting the ball early in the game. That's totally changed uh, right now. <laughs> I, I tell you what, uh, I think everybody here needs a timeout. Not the coaches, not just the players, but the fans. If it gets much louder, the paint's going to be coming off the walls here. Absolutely. Coach Trevon McCray for East St. Louis. Three for three from behind the arc in the second half. He's been a spark. I tell you what, yeah, he has been a little stud out there. Five nine, so on. And, uh, you know, I don't think that probably he's done for the night. Well, they can't guard everybody. Nope. And when the shooter like that gets in the zone, baby, you give it to him and you let him continue to ride. You know, sitting in that zone, that's the one thing you pay. You do not have everybody on everybody. You know, you, you, the way to bust the zone is to knock those long-range threes down. That's right. Okay, Co coaches are pleading right now at the end of this timeout. They're pleading for the co for the team to do what they asked them to do. That timeout was charged to East St. Louis. That was the 30-second timeout. Each team's got four remaining. Here is Munson, top of the key, inside. What a move, but he missed. Gets a rebound, though. How about that? That was a good heady play there, knocking it off the yeah. Cokia player out of bounds right in front of the cheerleaders. Yeah, you know, he was almost so high, somebody on the second deck could have grabbed the ball yeah. out of his hands. Have to get those cheerleaders some mouthpieces over there if they keep doing those things. Right. Well, we've got the Elite Eight to take over. They're on the <laughs> sideline. No look pass. This is Dan Williams. Up off the mark. Rebound. Big McCrary inside. And he He's gets got, he fouled. Gets foul. He gets a foul. Looks like it's on Jackson coaching. If it is, that's his fourth. Vincent Jackson, 6'6", six, six, going up with... Big number 33 is six for that's Johnny his, McCray. That's his fourth foul. That's Jackson's fourth foul. Now, Jackson's been a little bit more quiet in the second half. Give credit to East St. Louis. Yep. Taking yep. him away. Yep. Yep. One thing I want to say, John, before I forget about it, 
I want to compliment both schools. This has been a great atmosphere. You know, both schools, students are into the game, not out of control, done a great job. The administration's on both on both sides doing a wonderful job. This is just a great, great atmosphere for it's, high school basketball. It's been a total event. Uh, it's been well officiated and, and, of course, well, well played. This is Big McCrary at the line. He's going to shoot two. Got 5.30 to go. Ties it up. I'm sorry, that was the second. The game is tied. 5.28 to go, 58 all. This is Miner. I to Carlton Rivers. I think we're going to find the ball in the hands of the money men. Miner and Munson. My question is, who's the money man right now? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we got a lot of people out there. Here's Jennings. He's been one of them, but that's not his no. game inside. No, it's not. That's no, not. But here we go. I here got a feeling Munson. we're going to penetrate. Oh, oh that's so hard. Deshaun Munson, folks. Just yeah. sit back and yeah. relax and I watch mean, this kid play. That, that was right out of the twilight zone, folks. He just willed it to happen, and it did. This is Miner. This is Rivers. Oh, oh yeah. here we go. Darius Austin with the finish and the foul. You know, I tell you what, he's played a wonderful game tonight. Uh, and he's going to go to the line and complete this, uh, hopefully complete this three, uh, a conventional three-point play. That's on Big McCrary. Johnny McCrary, that's only his second. He's fine. We're going to go to the line to try to finish the three-point play in Darius Austin. Trying to unknot it. Tell you what, Coach, three. I don't have a vested interest in this game whatsoever, but I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah, I, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. Compliment all these kids on the way they've played. Absolutely. I don't know how the fans can stay in their seats. Darius misses, the, misses his free throw. Can't complete the three-point play. And guess what, folks? We're tied again. <laughs> Here we go. Munson controls it at the top of the key. He's been magnificent in the second half. He certainly has. And you know what? The pace has slowed down. They're, they're working on some set plays here. He's going to dial up the offense. He moves to his right. He's at the volleyball stripe. Over to Justice Smith. And it looks like what you talked about earlier. They're going to make Kahokia come out and guard him. And I don't blame him. Smith over to Munson. Munson going to try to take him off the dribble. He does. Up inside. He misses. Rebound. East St. Louis. Kick back out to Smith. Over to Dan Williams. And they reset. Here we got a timeout, and you notice on that one, McRae came the same way that he does on offense. He comes, and whether he gets the feed, this time he got the rebound, and he was able to kick it back out. Yeah, we got uh, a timeout, a full timeout called by, I believe, Cahokia. Nope, I'm gonna, East St. Louis called a full timeout. They have three left. Cahokia has four left. Let's set the game up for you, folks. It's 60 to 60. There's 402 left. Fourth quarter. Everything on the line here. And when I say everything, I mean these. When you took a look at the brackets, John, a couple weeks ago when they came out, everybody in this gym and everybody in those two cities pointed to this night. This could be the night where these two teams go at it again. Yeah, yeah, they sure did. And I tell you what, it's, it's more than matched everyone's expectations to this point. Uh, there's been a lot of hustle, a lot of heart out on this court. Uh, hats off to, to both the teams, even to this point. We got four, and four minutes plus change to go. And uh, we got a champion, uh, maybe looking at a state champion that walks out of this gym with a W. The bottom line is, both teams deserve to be here. Okay. John, this, time, th th this game easily could come down to the free throw stripe here. The way we're getting into the lane and guys are getting hacked, somebody's going to have to knock down some free throws or hit a big yeah. shot. Yeah. You know where Munson wants to take the ball. Here is Smith from downtown. Ooh, in oh, in and out. McCrary down low, and he's fouled. Oh, my goodness. Well, hey, give McCrary credit with the offensive rebound, John. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Absolutely. It was sweet. I tell you what, uh, it was a nice shot. and just rimmed out, barely missed. Uh, McCrary came for the putback, and he was blocked. But as he got blocked, there was a little bit of body on body. So Big John's got the free throw line. He's been pretty successful there tonight. He's already at 18. He's looking for his 19th point at the line tonight. He'll get two.
McCrary. McCrary's got 18. Looking at his 19th point and trying to give the Flyers the lead. He misses the first. That was Devontae Williams that went up with him. Devontae all 6'9". That one rolls in. East St. Louis, one-point lead, 3.55 to go. Put a stopwatch on that when it kind of rolled slowly around the rim before dropping through. This is Jennings to Carlton Rivers. Over to Miner. Miner, a long-range three. No good. Rebound, Cahokia. Ball is tipped out of bounds off Cahokia. Yep. East yep. St. Louis basketball. You know, Devontae Williams is in there to play a role right now, and he got he saved that uh, possession with a rebound. He did, Got John. it back out, and then uh, Cahokia just couldn't, couldn't capitalize on it. Yeah, Darius Austin had his hands on the basketball, couldn't control it. The result is East St. Louis ball with the one-point lead and 3.23 to go. Over to Scott. He drives in the lane. Up and in! Oh, my goodness. He shot. He oh, shot. John Pelly, the smallest guy on the floor. Yeah, yeah. And he finds a way to get in with all the trees. He's 5'8", and he shot over a guy 6'9". Softly. Great little, job little by the little man. I tell you what, East St. Louis has had little guys do big things tonight. Yep, they sure have. This is Jennings out top. Three-point lane, East St. Louis, 2.52 to go. Over to my, uh, Darius Austin. Carlton Rivers controls the ball at the top of the key. He's been a little quiet this half, Yes, too. he has. Jennings, a guy that's caught some fire of late. He's trying to take Scott off the dribble. Over to uh, no good for Miner. He misses Munson the other way. The ball's up there we go. to Smith with the lay-in. Number five. 65, 60, 221 to go. Timeout, Cahokia. Five foot six. We know he wasn't going to slam a jamma, but he, he did exactly what he needed to do. Caught that cross-country pass, laid it off the glass. Two points. I'll tell you what, Justin Smith for East St. Louis has absolutely answered the bell. We've said that about three or four guys, but that's how it's been tonight. The superstars have done what we thought they would do to a point. But it's because of the supporting cast that they've been able to get to a five-point lead. Yeah, actually. You know, I'm still, we're still, we're, it's not too late yet, but we're still kind of waiting for um, uh, Mr. Miner to heat up. He's launched a lot of threes uh, this evening and so on and really hasn't capitalized on them. And he is a dead eye when he gets in the zone. A absolutely. You know, a, a note here. What's been the difference? East St. Louis looks ten times more poised in the second half than they did in the first half. Under control, moving the basketball, taking good shots. They're within the game plan. They withstood that storm in the first half. Now they got a five-point lead with two and a half to go. Yep, yep. And the way these teams, the pace that they can score points at, though five points is not safe by any means. Every possession crucial at this point. This is Jennings. Jennings has lit it up from behind three tonight. Over to Austin. The superstar minor at the top of the key. Dribbles down into the lane. Kicks it out to Darius Austin. Back down to Miner, and he dribbles it out to the top. Austin into the paint. Miner passed one up there to Jennings. No good. Off East St. Louis. Dan Williams on the rebound. That's going to be his. Is this foul on Williams? This is his fifth foul if it is. Boy, that's not good news. That, that's Fouled out with six points. Was their spark in the first half that kept him in the game. He's done. Checking in for East St. Louis will be Joseph Cook. And at the line was the first half hero for Cahokia, Vincent Jackson. How about it? Haven't heard his name much in the second half. Nope. Let's see if he can knock down two big free throws. Five point spread. See if he can get us within um, get him within three. Misses it. Not a good one. Munson the other way. This is too big. McCrary up. No good. Tip. And it's good. Oh, my oh, my goodness. What a great job by Joseph Cook who comes in for Williams. Yep. Here's a three ball by Jenny. It's good. 
What an answer by Cahokia. Boy, that's some poise. They're showing some poise there. Uh, well, East St. Louis wants to push it a little bit. They got a four-point lead, or they had they had a seven-point lead, and they went, continued to want to push it a little bit. Well, Cahokia Dor came out and really answered the belt with that I agree. by draining that three. Dorenzo Jennings averaging seven points a game. He has 18 tonight. He's had huge shots in both halves, none no bigger than that. 67-63, St. Louis, 127 to go. That was the shot that kept them in the game. They needed something there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And they got it. They got it. Here we go. We got we got all the coaches uh, from Cahokia out on the court. Gosh, coach, they got a coach for every player. That's just about. But the man calling all the, uh, at, the at the hands of the controls, Darian Nash, he has the final word. They take the floor. Let's set you up. Here we go. We're live from Mascuda. We got this 3A sectional championship final between East St. Louis and Cahokia. We got East a buck St. Louis, 27 to go. Buck 27 left, 67 63, East St. Louis. It's been, a, it's, it's been an explosive half of basketball. It's I don't expect anything else for, <laughs> less for the next you know, minute and a half. You know, it's going to be hard for a lot of these fans to sleep tonight, whether they win or lose. Uh, just such an electricity about this game. Such a rivalry. Uh, kids from each team know each other, grew up together, basically right down the road. Uh, so much history, and they only get to play when it matters. Here we go. East St. Louis trying to beat the press. Pahokia has come out in the this press. This is Smith. Smith to Munson. That's where they want the ball. Yep. Although I say that, John, he's not the best free throw shooter on the team. No, no, he certainly isn't. As a matter of fact, St. Louis has gone extra small right now. They got their ball handling machine out there, the ball handling team. They got Big John in there to take care of business down low. And they've got their superstar, uh, Deshaun Munson, that can take care of things just about any place on the court. Well, what's funny is they want to get the ball of their big man. McCrary shoots almost 80% from the line. Munson knocks down this? the first. Right. Munson just a 43% free throw shooter, but he's knocked down some big ones tonight. Yeah, he sure has. Vincent Jackson just checked back in. And if he can heat it up this last minute and 18, he could still be a factor. Kogia down by five. 118 to go. Munson misses the second. Oh, my gosh. And he gets his own rebound. That's And he gets fouled. Just so an unbelievable play by him. You can't question his effort. Here we go. He's going to get another shot. You know, here's the thing, John. 44 45% free throw shooter. Who cares? He finds the basketball. He gets the basketball and he gets it to people that can score. You'll risk the free throw percentage. Yeah. You know he can get you yeah. the ball. Absolutely. And, and, and it's a double benefit because if you can score points without taking time off the clock, uh, that's that's pretty sweet. Right. Munson at the line. 68 63, 115 to go. It's been a tale of two halves. Cahokia dominated the first half. East St. Louis has done the same in the second. Here we go. The man is turning it into a free throw machine. It's good. Well, don't, what's the phrase, John? Big time players make big time shots in big time games. The free throws are the big time shots right now, and he's answering the bell. Here we go. Six point okay. lead, East St. Louis. Hit Two it. possession game. Into the lane is Minor. It's blocked. Vincent Jackson controls it underneath. Up, no good. Minor up in, and it's okay. foul. We're gonna. He's gonna have a chance for a conventional three point. And I tell you what. He was camped out under there, and he wasn't going to go away quietly. Well, again, talk about Munson. We talked about Minor before the game. He does not want this to be his last high school basketball game. No way. He's at the line to cut the lead to three. And it's good. 69-66 East St. Louis with the ball and 103 to play. This is the All-State candidate Munson. They are spread now, Scott. They are spread. They're taking the time off. Well, Cahokia is not close enough to get a count yet. Now they are. Munson controls it up top of screen by McCrary. McCrary just standing in the way and doing a nice job. Out to Scott. Michael Scott controls the ball, and he's got the quickness. Got a timeout by East St. Louis. 36 and a half seconds to go. Michael Scott will go to the line. He's a 58.8% free throw shooter. He'll shoot two. I believe East St. Louis called that timeout. Yeah, yeah it was a timeout, Scott. Timeout. 
Yeah. The 10 team fouls puts him in the super bonus. I tell you what. Scott coach, will shoot too. Coach is uh, mighty excited over there. Uh, coach Young. Uh, he is not going to, he's not going to let this thing, you know, die on the vine. He's going to go, said he wanted to start hard. He's going to end hard. Cahokia players are out there. They're ready to go back to war. Folks, we have a final from the Pekin sectional. Edwardsville big, 71-45 to 45 over Rock Island. Wow. Good job. Good job for the Edwardsville. In the sectional final up in Mount Zion, Champagne Centennial, the one seed is down to Chatham Goodwood, 39-25, with just a few minutes to play there. Good, good, good. Congratulations to Chatham. Okay, we got 36 seconds of basketball to play, and that could be a lifetime for some of these guys. Buckle up, there. folks. Here we go. 36 and a half to go. And I'm not sure why we aren't at the line here, John. Was there not? Oh, no, not? no, there was no foul. It was just a timeout. Oh, sorry now, about that. Now, now we're going to be going. Okay. There we was got, no um, foul. I apologize. Yeah, folks. we got Justin Smith, the three point expert, and he's going to be stepping up and uh, trying to drain some free throws. He's a 70% free throw shooter. Yes, he is. Now he's only taken 10 free throws on the year, John. This will be his 11th. He's 7 for 10. Trying to make it a two-possession game. This is huge. He'll shoot two. Misses the first. Boy, that rattled around, didn't it? It could have gone in, but it didn't. That's the new rims here at the new Mosquito High School, huh? Yeah, everything, yeah. everything is new, <laughs> even the rims. The second one rattles out. We still have a one-possession game. Here we go, folks. 32 seconds to go. This is Miner, the All-State candidate and the long-range shooter. He dribbles in, pulls up from deep. It's no good. It's out of bounds. That's going to be a oh, side ball. That is the right call. Great He's job by the official. Yep. That was off of Vincent Jackson. East St. Louis controls the ball. Yeah, he was charging hard. That ball came straight down. It didn't go up. It came straight down and hit him in the shoulder and went out. We'll have another timeout here. Looks like we're going to have a full timeout. Cahokia. That leaves them with one. 23 seconds to play. 69-66 East St. Louis. We're ready to start the fourth possession, the fourth different possession since we've been inside of a minute here. Either the fans are uh, are numbed or they're exhausted. Uh, there are some that are that are indeed on their feet, but I tell you what, the electric electricity is still here. John, uh, just a great point here uh, made by our great staff that we have up here helping us and. Uh, Coach, uh, Coach Doyle Brandon helping us with the stats. But what a great job by the seniors from East St. Louis. Oh. You know, I mean, you talk about Munson. Yeah. You, 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 you talk about whoever you want, McCrary. Uh, yeah. The guys that come off the bench, Michael Scott's a senior. Sure. Those guys yeah. have put this team on their back in the second half. You bet. They, they started all seniors, and they got some quality players, that, uh, seniors that could come off the bench, too. Here we go. Looks like a... Uh, Munson's going to interview, uh, interview, <laughs> going to put the ball in play from the end line. Want to get, want to get the ball to John McCrary if they can. Yeah, 23 seconds to go. They've got him at half court. We'll see if they set a screen for him. They get it to him. That's the guy they want to get fouled. That's a great job by East St. Louis. Okay, ref made a quick call on the foul. Their best free throw shooter, almost 80 percent from the line, Johnny McCrary, will go to the line. Now people are standing up. I mean, the court is almost ringed uh, with people and spectators and so on. The capacity here, John, just <laughs> under 1,700. <laughs> no, well, There's yeah. more than 1,700 people in this gym right now. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Here's Big McCrary. And he oh, missed. my goodness. It hit once, twice, three, four wow. times. He's St. Louis in. with a chance on the last two yeah, trips. To push this to a two-possession game, been unable to do it. it. Hasn't happened. It hasn't happened, has it? This is a big free throw, John. Knocks it down. There it is. Yeah, he did knock it down, and it's a four-point lead. Good job by the big 6'5 senior. 20 seconds. Here comes Austin. 17 to go. 16. Down to 14. Here's Miner for three. Oh, my goodness. 
My goodness. From Threeville. Mr. Wow. Miner hits nothing but the bottom of the net. Well, he hit one earlier from about 30 feet. <laughs> that was He scooted in a little bit to about 26 feet for that one. And that was he was harried all the way on that shot. Yeah, just, and you know what? I mean, he just made a decision that it was going to go in. And the only way it was going to happen is that he'd go ahead and pull the trigger from out. Right, the top and of the obviously beat. I'm exaggerating. My point is that was a contested three that he created, yeah. and he knocked it down. Yeah. Again, big-time player. He certainly did. And he got, came up big there. You know what? I mean, uh, <laughs> what has happened in the last minute except six possessions? We've had uh, free throws. We've had three points, and uh, it ain't over yet. This game's had it all. First half full of defense. You know, the uh, first quarter where we had single digits yeah. until just seconds left in the quarter. Uh, now we got 12.3 seconds to go. 70 to 69 East St. Louis. Who knows? You know, uh, looking back upon the first two or three minutes and so on, uh, there were seven turnovers just within that time, and, and the scoring was kind of spotty. But right now, I tell you what, uh, they've more than picked it up, haven't they? Absolutely. Uh, 12 seconds to go. That's a lot of time. They're going to foul right away. Cahokia will get the basketball back in some fashion in a one-possession situation. There we go. They East St. Louis has got to knock down some free throws. They've got timeouts. They might use them. McCrary gets fouled. Again, the guy they want with the ball. We'll see if he can knock these down. Well, 1.2 seconds off the clock, so you were right. It was a fast foul. But in the super bonus, he's going to go there for two. Well, we'll see what happens here, but he's got a chance now to give his team a three-point lead. But with all the weapons, again, Cahokia, three guys that shoot it better than 50% from three-point line. Coming down to transition, they're going to get an opportunity to stay in this game. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that is if they can prevent an offensive rebound from Munson. Don't be surprised if he makes some noise down here in the paint. Misses the first. You know, the man, uh, young man has got to just be a little bit tight. I know everybody in this gymnasium absolutely. is. But uh, uh, played a whale of a game. Played big. Either way, what a basketball game. Everything we hoped for. We've had it all. McCrary with the biggest free throw thrill of his life going on the way. Going for his 21st point. And it's good. There he is. Three-point lead. Ten seconds to go. Nine. Eight. Down to seven. Six. And the lane is Austin up. And in. How about it? And a foul. That was sweet. That was sweet. The game is tied. 4.6 seconds to go. And somebody's going to go to the free throw line. It is time. <laughs> Austin at the line. Scott, is it a surprise you that it's Darius Austin? Uh, unbelievable. No, you know, it got it went quiet for part of the game. We highlighted certain guys in the, in the beginning of the game for a reason. He was one of them. Yeah. He's got a chance to give his team the lead with 4.6 to go. Yeah, and he has left nothing, nothing on the court. He's a junior. He is That's a the junior. scary part. I tell you, yeah, he's one of the young kids out there. Here he is. It's loud as can be in here. He's going to make attempt a free throw. It's no good. It's rebounded by Munson. He calls a timeout. East St. Louis will have the ball. Time with 3.8 to go. This My ball goodness. will be inbounded to Munson, <laughs> and he's going to try to make something happen. I tell you what. I, I don't know if uh, some of the fans can stand in overtime here, but uh, uh, it has some of the earmarks for that. I said it before. I, I don't have a vested interest at all, but I'm nervous. <laughs> <laughs> what oh, else can man. you ask for? Sure. No. We may we may get extra basketball. Well, I tell you what, I tell you, it's been a fantastic game. I tell you, it's uh, it, it's what March Madness. This is madness. Absolutely, and it just happens to occur in March. And, and honestly, and I want to mention too. I feel blessed and, and honored to be able to call the game with you, John. <laughs> this is fun. Thanks to the IHSA uh, TV portal that we've uh, Mascuta's invested in here of recent times, and and. Uh, this is just a lot of fun, and it brings the game to people that, you know, couldn't get into this sold-out place. There's people all over the state watching tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully, uh, this is John and I's really first crack at something just like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, but a, it's, a, it's a steep learning curve. Yeah, we've had a lot of fun. But and, uh, I tell you what. Uh, try to be prepared. You never know what's going to happen in a no, game like I this. I tell you what. This is, uh, this is pretty amazing because they're going to have, uh, again, Mr. Munson inbounding okay. from the end line. He's going to inbound it. He's got to go. They got a full court to go in three seconds, 3.8 seconds. This reminds me of the Tyus Edney times. That's it. That's it. 
Is there a Hail Mary in front? The, the referee telling the coaching staff from Goki to yeah, get back. Yeah. He got too many guys up near the court. They've got to get off the court. There we go. Yeah, we had six out there. Now, Nan, uh, I don't know what we have here. Mr. Young, is uh, Coach Nunn is calling a timeout. I don't know, Coach. He was. I think he was saying that they, they need to take a timeout for the way of game. Could be. Could be. Well, the refs are conferring. They're going now to talk to the coach. Well, the only coach that should be up is Coach Nash. That's right. There's too many guys up. I know it's they're anxious. I know it's tough. But, you know, you got to practice situations like this. There's co too many guys bouncing around. Months in the inbound. Oh, my gosh. We're going to overtime. Wow. Oh. Oh. Wow. Oh, baby. It, it, you know, it, it's almost, it, it, what, what else can you say except that uh, we're going to be blessed with another four minutes of, of effort and excitement out there from these ten young men. Yeah, I think, the, uh, you know, I think you can get away from what matters often, you know. But at the beginning of the game, we talked about a few young men. Those are the guys that made the plays down the stretch, you know. The, the great players tend to step up in these type of situations. Uh, Munson has certainly been phenomenal tonight after a slow start. And I know that Miner hasn't had the game that he wanted to have. But he came down here in a key situation, made a huge three. What do we get but overtime? An extra four minutes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's like putting a quarter in a gumball machine and getting two. It is. It is. It's a blessing. I'll tell you what. So they're going to play four more minutes. Folks, I hope you're enjoying it. We're live at Mascuda High School, Mascuda, Illinois. Class 3A super, uh, sectional final. East St. Louis, Cahokia. We're tied. It's 71 apiece. we got a four-minute overtime period. Who knows what's going to happen? It's been a game of runs. It's been a game of halves. The great players have been great. The role players have been great. Going to start with a jump ball. The ref's going to go ahead. He's got him position. And it's going to go up. Here we go. Minor control. They're setting up on the perimeter. The ball's being worked around the perimeter. <laughs> they are a very good team around the perimeter. Yes, they are. They all can shoot it, too. This is Austin. This is Jennings, who's been a key tonight. This is Minor. Nice dribble. Picks up his dribble. Over to Jennings for three. It's off the mark. It's tipped out yep. to Darius Austin. This is Vincent Jackson, who had the huge first half. This is Minor, who's trapped in the corner. Looks like a jump ball. It is a jump ball. We got a jump East St. Louis basketball. Great job by East St. Louis defensively. They got the trap on Minor, caused the jump. Yeah, that was outstanding, outstanding defense. All right, here we go. This is Munson. <laughs> Comanches are back in the zone. Javon McCrary, who's hit some big threes. Over to Munson in the lane. Up, no good. Tries to get his own rebound. It's bounced around. McCrary tips it away. And we got a foul. That's going to go on. 14, Gary Hickman. That's Hickman. If that's Hickman, that'll be his fourth. No, that'll be. That'll be his third. No, that is his fourth. That was right. Yeah. Hickman. That's his fourth foul. Yeah. To that's the line is Michael Scott. He's a defensive specialist. He's one of those ball control players and stuff like that. Yeah, he's shooting 58% from the line. Got a chance to make. Uh, but he hasn't taken many. This one's up and he almost missed everything. <laughs> Free throws were key early in the fourth quarter. Oh, they gosh. missed a lot late. Oh, yes. Each one becomes more important. Scott with his second. 
That's no good. Rebound, Scott. Oh, and he lost it. Okay. Hey, Scott, we've got a minute and uh, minute and 20 seconds now. No score. No action. This is Miles. 71 all. 2.38 to go. Down inside two. There's a foul. 14. Looks Gary like Hickman, and he's fouled. Number 40 committed it. That's Stewart. That's his five. That's his fifth. He's fouled out. And although Stewart, maybe not one of the guys that we talked about as a key cog, he's been key tonight. They're going to miss him. That's right. Yeah, every, every, every player out there is a cog in the machine. So uh, there's a lot of talent, though, a lot of talent to going to the breach yet. This is Hickman. He'll be shooting two. Misses the first. Oh, my goodness. Coach Frito shooting down the stretch here in the yeah. final two minutes. Yeah. It's been, it's been an issue. You know. And, and, and credit the nerves. I mean, certainly a big game, big sure. situation. Yeah, and we talk about the ones that are missed now, but it, it, they're they're no, no more important than the ones that were missed earlier as well. He misses them both. McCurry yeah. with the rebound still. Scoreless in the overtime period, almost halfway through. 2.30 to go. 71 all. Munson controls the ball. He's headed up the court. Left side. He's guarded by Hickman. Sitting back in that loose 2-3. East St. Louis not eager to do much if they're going to sit back in that. This is Munson. Munson off the dribble and backs off. This is Scott. Munson picks up his dribble over to Scott and back to Munson. He controls. 150 to go. Tied up. This is Joseph Cook. Great ball movement here. It is. It is. They're well controlled. And you got to be thinking there's going to be some penetration happening. This is McCrary oh, down low. Great move. Up and in. Oh, great body control. Oh, he went great up. Job. In a big time situation, McCrary comes through again. Yeah, he went up and he uh, he looked like a big comma in the air before he uncoiled and the ball uh, softly off the glass. He's a treat to rush down there. Yeah, I like the is. big man with the he good is. feet. He's got soft hands and he's got a nice touch. 73-71, 1.15 to go. This is Miner on the baseline. Up and yeah. in. Okay, that's why he's a star. 73s. He really answered the bell down the stretch. We're tied again. Minute We're go. at a minute to go here in Mascuda. Hey, hey, battle for the ball. Okay. Still a battle. We got a foul, I can tell. That's going to be on Mr. Munson. Okay. Well, a little bit of emotion out there at this point and so on. Yeah, I don't... I, 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 yeah, that, I gotta, that, that, that was, uh, you know... It, it, you, you got to admire these guys for the way they kept uh, everything in check at, at this point. And, um, you know, like they say, uh, <laughs> it's not personal, it's business. But uh, coaches have a restored order. Absolutely. you got to keep their calm in these situations. A absolutely. Ab ab absolutely. Tie game, 56 to play. That's Munson's fourth foul. Could be an issue if we get into another overtime period or even yeah. late in this one. Yeah. We've got... Uh, Gary Hickman at the line. Going to go for two. Misses the first. Boy. Free throws just not going down That's in the last it. two minutes. That's right. I tell you what. Actually, the last five minutes. Two minutes in regulation and here in the overtime period. Just struggling at the line. Both teams. Now Cahokia puts everybody back. Hickman will shoot one more. That's good. That one is good. One point lead. Cahokia will reset with 56.2 to go. 74-73. Cahokia. Cahokia has gone back now. They're going to set up in that zone again. We've got Mr. Munson. It's going to inbound from the end line. Coming to John McRae. Clock starts. This is Munson. He'll look to make something happen. He tries to go off the dribble. Looks like he was fouled. He was fouled. Oh boy. Yeah, he uh, he tried to go through a seam, and they tried to fill that seam. That foul is on foul. Jennings, I believe. Yeah, uh, Lorenzo. Six That's his senior. first. Okay. At the line is the All-State candidate, Deshaun Munson. Okay. 
He'll shoot two. He can add to his legend right here. This is the first. Oh, in and out. You know, I think uh, both coaches, Scott, after the game are going to say, um, had we made our free throws, it would have maybe yeah. would have changed the outcome. East St. Louis only has three regular players that shoot over 60% from the line. Yeah, yeah that's not a strong point for the team. Uh-oh, missed two. Missed them both. 46 seconds to go. Here comes the Comanches. Well, they're going to have to foul. There's no shot clock. Got a one-point lead. Deshaun Munson cannot foul. He's got four. Coach, uh, Coach Nash uh, calls the timeout, gathers his squad at the sideline, and again, you can see the difference in the two coaching uh, demeanors and so on. Coach Nash is, uh, is calm. He's keeping his players on check and so on. Uh, Coach Young is coaching him up. That's it. That's it. He sure is. He's got his players sitting down. I'm sure he's, he's going ahead and refueling them with a little bit of fire. Look for a quick foul. I don't, I don't, I don't see any reason that East St. Louis would want to string this thing uh, you know, would, would want to sit back and wait. No. I think you want to put them on the line now and take your chances. Yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, again, you know, we got to compliment the refs, too. I mean, they've, they've uh, really done an outstanding job. I don't think uh, – you're going to have people that say, well, their call was missed right. here and there, but I tell you what, uh, I think you, you and I both agree they've done, they've done a great job. Well, and here's another thing. Munson will probably come back on the floor here, but it, it has to cross Coach Young's mind to keep on the bench – just for this possession before they get a foul. He cannot foul. He's right. got four. Right. He is back out on the floor. He'll go the inbound pass. Probably a smart move there. He's there on the inbound. And, and you know what? This is a smart move. you got a 6'7 man inbounding the ball. He can go over the top or around the other side. Austin will inbound. He does. There he goes. To Minor. Minor controls. Uh, looks like East Louis is going to sit back and let them make something happen. I don't. The count's going on him. He's count. He's advancing the ball. There's a break. 25 seconds. They got it. A poke. You say Lewis got it. Oh my gosh. No, no basket. basket at all. No basket. No basket. It that's was going to go through. That's a shame. And that was player got drop. hand up inside the cylinder, didn't he? That was going to drop. Got it. And East St. Louis player got his hand up inside the basket. Tipped it. It's Boy. a good call by the official. Yeah, it was a great it's call. It's the right call. I'll tell you what, I wish we had replay, folks, to show you that one. But uh, all I can do is say, go ahead and re uh, retool this uh, this broadcast, and you can see this last this, this last overtime. You can see the whole game after uh, afterwards again. They're going to be a foul, though. Looks like the officials were straightening it out. The interesting thing here, John, I don't, I don't know the ruling if you get still get two shots, because it was an offensive goaltending. I don't right, know the rule right, at all. Right. Well, I think I, w I would think, and and we'll see. But I think that the refs are going to give him two okay. shots. Well, Hickman is fouled out of the game for Cahokia. They're going to bring in Philip Scott to take his place. I don't know the rule. We'll see what they what they say here. I don't see any reason he doesn't get two shots, but it's an interesting thing. I've never yeah. seen that before. Yeah. Be a great trivia question, wouldn't it? He is going to shoot two. He's got to knock down one. Yeah, I tell you what, the last time, the last trip to the line was not very successful. Let's see, let's see what the young man has in him here. Nope. Okay, one more chance, one more chance to, to knot it up. 19 and a half seconds. You hate to see the turn of events. The ball drops. It's a different ball game. Now he's got to make them the hard way. Yeah. Makes that go. one. There we go. Tie ball game. Koki inbound. Right 19 to go. Here we go, folks. This is Miner. 13 to go. 12. Miner at the top of the key. 10. 9. Down to 8 seconds. He's looking to create a shot. He goes up. It's blocked. 4. 3. 2. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness! We need a seismograph. Did you see what happened, folks? A block. He recovered it. This he game went, is over. Hard, and he went hard. 
The ball went high off the glass. It was contested. My goodness. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I, don't I, know, I tell you, I, I don't know what you expected <laughs> coming in here tonight. <laughs> you got more than you bargained. But you can only hope. <laughs> you know what? To see a finish like that. My goodness. 76. 74. And actually, I don't think that score is right, John. Didn't he say, really, that's, that's right. It was tied coming down. Tied. I tell you what. The, Unbelievable. The cream rises to the top, doesn't it, partner? I tell you what. Uh, Keenan Miner, uh, he didn't have the game that you might have expected of him to start with. But, my gosh, he ended with 23 points. And he, the capstone shot at the end. After being blocked. Unbelievable. Picks the ball up on himself. Just makes his way back to the backboard Go, goes up with yeah. history you know in the it. one thing that East St. Louis will kick themselves over they have a timeout left he made the shot with about 2.3 to go and I know it's a long shot but a timeout's got to be called there it's got to be used Yeah, and yeah. you know I, I, I don't know I tell you. Uh, uh, if they didn't understand they had one left but nevertheless what a finish my goodness. What a basketball game. What an honor to call the game. Oh, baby. It is just incredible uh, of what just transpired. Yeah. Two, two teams that absolutely played their hearts out. You Somebody know, had to lose, and that's unfortunate. You know, Scott, you and I are both coaches, and, and, and we get excited about our teams. Uh, we get excited about our favorite teams. But you know what? You and I, uh, uh, you know, we're watching this team from a neutral standpoint. You said you were nervous. I tell you what, it's... Uh, uh, I, I got to go to the doctor tomorrow and get my blood pressure checked. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah, this is. Uh, <laughs> you know, whoa. We're, like I said, we're new to the broadcast game. <laughs> How do you get this like? I mean, guys, oh, call, baby. guys call games for years and don't get to see a game like oh, this. Oh, baby. But I'm, I mean, I'm sweating. There is. Uh, I don't know what to think about it. I, I mean, there's a spectrum of emotion out here. I mean, we've got the orange and blue faithful that are in stunned. This well, let's recap the scoring. Oh. Uh, it's hard to it's hard to hard to grab your own attention right now, but as we said, certainly Keenan Miner probably went from being an also ran tonight to the player of the game because of the shots he was able to make down the stretch in the fourth quarter and in overtime. Unbelievable finish. He finishes with 23 points. He had played with four fouls. The kid had an incredible finish. Oh my God! Also, with 18 points, was Dorenzo Jennings, a guy averaging yeah. under 10. Uh, 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 you know, and 15 points from Darius Austin, who oh, oh, yeah. there he is again. Yeah, he was the X factor. But and I'm looking at the other side for East St. Louis for the Flyers, and my goodness, uh, their star stud, uh, Deshaun Munson, 35. He had 23 points as well. And guess who else had 23? Yeah, it's a ma uh, they, Johnny they, McCrary. They canceled each yeah. other. Oh, they're out. Yeah, Johnny McCrary, my goodness. Uh, what can you say? Well, I tell you. Um, I don't see the East St. Louis players out there. I think Coach has taken them in. Yeah. Uh, congratulations have been exchanged and so on. The sectional uh, uh, plaque has been awarded. And uh, my goodness, I tell you what. Um, uh, what, what. What else can you say? I, I, I mean, you know, uh, life is... Uh, Life is serious, of course, but, uh, you know, basketball was just pure fun tonight. Pure it was. fun to watch. And, you know, this is what it's all about to me, John, in high school. You got a group of kids that love each other, that play for each other, and, and you know what, being a coach, that's what I love. It's all about the kids. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah. It's all about the kids. It's always been about the yeah. kids. It'll always be about the kids. I don't care where you're from, where you were raised. That elation on those young men's face right now, is absolutely oh, priceless. It is. I love every minute of it. It you is. Know, and uh, uh, for those fans watching all across the state, yeah. I hope you enjoyed this one as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. If I could borrow a phrase from one of my idols, Mike Shannon, he's my man. But this is just an unbelievable atmosphere tonight uh, where nobody knew what was going to happen from the start, and you certainly didn't know what was going to happen at the finish. No, and I tell you what, uh, you, uh, uh, win or lose, if you're on the losing end, if you're on the short side of the score tonight as a fan, you certainly can't take anything, anything away from. Yeah, you certainly can't. Uh, 
can't take anything away from either team. I, I can't stop smiling. I mean, just because of the satisfaction of seeing such a well-played game, uh, uh, the outcome is almost uh, almost uh, secondary, although the Comanches did make that important score at the very end. Yeah. John, I, I see Earl Austin Jr. running around back here, the St. Louis guru from uh, high school basketball, written a novel, uh, calls the games for SLU. He's going to join us real quick for just a couple comments on what was an unbelievable basketball game. Uh, John will be back here shortly. I'm going to talk yeah, to Earl. And, I'm going to step out, and, uh, and, and uh, Coach Austin is going to speak with you all. Ladies and gentlemen, we're, we're at Mascuda High School, sold-out crowd, uh, unbelievable atmosphere here. We're joined now, pleasure to be joined by Earl Austin, Jr. from obviously all kinds of accolades, certainly uh, known as the, one of the silent line men for St. Louis University basketball and obviously everything else St. Louis basketball. Coach, what can you say about tonight? Uh, an incredible game. Uh, this is a game that everybody's been looking for for weeks when the brackets came out and uh, it lived up to the hype and then some. I mean, East St. Louis was down 16 points. Unbelievable. Looked like they were out of it. And then they were up seven late in the game. It looked like Cahokia was out of it. And they stormed back and forth overtime. And it's fitting it goes down to the final shot with the, the two top players with the ball. Munson makes the free throw, ties the game, and uh, Miner showing. Usually it's a jumper that wins it, but gets a shot Absolutely. block and comes back and makes the layup as time expires. Uh, an incredible, incredible game tonight. Yeah, it's awesome. And what we talked about on the broadcast, those two guys had their moments early in the game where they we were depending on other guys to, to make some noise. But when it mattered at the end, that's where the basketball was. Those guys made the plays, and that's why Koki is celebrating that because of their superstar. Absolutely. Uh, Keenan Miners before, he's been hitting big shots since he uh, entered Koki as a freshman. As a freshman, he made a, a game winner against O'Fallon to win the Centralia tournament. So making big shots is nothing new to him. And when the game is on the line, uh, they put the ball in number 20's hands. And uh, more often than not, and especially now as a senior, he's going to make something happen. And uh, he's just a tremendous player, old school variety, but uh, makes the play when it needs to. And uh, Cahokia moves on to the Super. Absolutely. And I, I said before the game, John said the same thing. We might have saw the two best teams in the 3A in the state of Illinois tonight. Yeah, at Morgan Park's pretty good, too. Yeah. They're probably number one going in. They were winning big tonight. But these two teams definitely have a, have a, a run in Peoria in them, whichever was going to win the game. And Cahokia moves on to play a very good Chad and Blendwood team. But uh, uh, with Cahokia, with the talent, the size, the depth, they had two or three guys, key guys foul out. So it shows their depth as well. And uh, 31 wins, that, that, that really speaks a lot. Well, too. Yeah, it was. It's an honor to have you. I appreciate you stopping by for a few minutes. Oh, it's my pleasure. Welcome to Mascuda. Thank you. Enjoy it. I come for the girls' tournament every once in a while. I enjoyed it there, and uh, yeah, glad to come over and see a great game. All right. Well, thank you. My pleasure. Yeah, have a nice night and a safe drive home. Well, John, when you got legends in the building standing right behind you, I feel like you got to bring them on for a couple minutes. Oh, I tell you what. And, and uh, you know... <laughs> watching a legendary game this game people will talk about now you talked earlier about the capacity of the crowd of being about 1800 and stuff like that it's going to be like anything else any any famous uh, contest because you know years from now people will be talking about this game uh, east, uh, east side and, and uh, cahokia and they were there it, it, there'll be, there'll be 18,000 people that were yeah. there it was awesome you know and i, and I want to i want to reiterate again the two crowds couldn't have been better oh this atmosphere couldn't have been better. Uh, Mas Mascuda administration did a phenomenal job. Both teams' administrators did a phenomenal job. Blessed to be a part of it. Awesome experience for me. I know you as well. Uh, you don't get to see things like this happen no, all the time. No, uh, absolutely not. And, and you know, uh, I can't think of one, one down aspect of any of tonight's activities and so on. I mean... Uh, not, not at all. I, I mean, uh, uh, and Scott, let me just say, uh, you, you, you've issued it to me, and back to you, buddy, because uh, you did a tremendous job. I, I'm, I'm really impressed. I mean, you know, you ought to consider, uh, don't quit your day job yet, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> you did a very, a very sweet job, I tell you. Yeah. Well, John, it's been fun. You're a good friend of mine, and uh, obviously when you can do this with somebody you actually like, it makes it better. Oh, gosh, I tell you, I hope <laughs> we do it again. Uh, you know what? Uh, I, it's going to be hard to match up to this, this contest. It though. is. But I'm looking forward to maybe some baseball action out here in the spring. Absolutely. Uh, not unless it warms up, though. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right, well, the lights are going off. It's time for us to go. Ladies and gentlemen, across the state of Illinois and wherever else you're watching this one across the country, we really enjoy bringing it to you. Uh, we hope to have you back for broadcast down the road. Thank you so much. What an awesome performance by everybody involved tonight. 
So long from Mascuda High School. It's been a real treat. Take care, everybody.